Hey, what is going on guys? It is Negative AE, and welcome back to Steins Gate Zero. Um, so I'm still not sure if I'm going to add this onto the last one or make this just a whole new one. It depends on how long we go for and what's going on here. So left, left, last we left off, freaking Maho was... I'm trapped in like the Brain Science Institute and no one knows it's there and I'm so I'm screwed. And then Maho's just here with Maori. I'm fine. Um, have you seen Okarin? Huh? Maho went completely still. Maori's innocent question reminded her of her own stupidity and cowardice. Do Wh why? Her voice was shaking. I haven't been able to get a hold of Okarin since yesterday. He hasn't gone home, he hasn't picked up the phone, and he's not answering text messages or Ryan. Dara says I'm worrying too much, but something doesn't feel right. So, I left school early today and now I'm searching around here. It was still only July, but it was pretty hot. She'd been wandering around all of Akibara in this heat. Uh, Maori Shina was a kind, pure-hearted girl, and that was the impression Maho had had. Someone else would, or she would never betray someone, uh, or get jealous, or let someone use her. Do you want to know? Huh? Maori had leaned forward. Maho, do you know where Okarin is? If you know, please tell me. Please. She bowed deeply. I see. And then she realized. And then she wished she hadn't. Maori was in love with Rintaro Okabe. A dull pain ran down her temples. You seem to really like Rintaro, didn't you? She could hear the noise in her head. Just tell Maori everything. And then have this innocent girl tell you how horrible you are. Maybe you'll feel better then. The idea raced through Maho's mind. Even as she knew it was wrong. She tried to hold back her headache, and she opened her mouth. I was with Okabe late last night. You were you? So, where is he now? Maho ignored her question. This is what he told me last night. No. He told me about another world he had experienced, where you, Maori Shina, had died again and again. Don't tell her. No matter what he did, he couldn't save you. You can't tell her this. To escape that nightmarish loop. To save you. It was like another person was speaking using Maho's mouth. Okabe sacrificed Kurusu and let her die. That's what he had told me. If he makes a time machine and tries to save Kurusu again, he'll go back to all that. You're hurting her. But the words didn't stop. Okabe is so afraid of that. He's doing everything he can to protect you. This is the world he chose after sacrificing many things to protect you. I'm sure he didn't tell you any of that though. That's not true. No. Okari. 
Mary was too shocked to speak. She looked like she was about to cry at any instant. <laughs> Girl, I've gotten Maori's ending twice now. <laughs> Although, albeit it was a lot easier this time around to get Maori's ending. I guess it was easy both times to get Maori's ending. Suddenly, Maori turned around and started to walk away with slim shoulders. I think it's more amazing that I got her ending, or Maori's ending, this time around. Even from behind her, Maho could tell she was having trouble walking straight. The truth was so cruel that confronting it threatened her very identity. That's how it seemed to Maho. Maho was still in a trance. It felt like there was a fog covering everything she saw. It was all out of focus, like a mirage. If someone told her it was a dream, she would easily believe it. The same was true of her own mind. She knew she would feel worse about what she just told Maori, but she realized she but while she realized she hurt her, she felt no emotion. That was probably why she was able to say something so awful. And then the phone in her pocket began to vibrate. She looked and saw it was Amadeus from Kudasu. She felt a small, thin needle prick her paralyzed heart. She couldn't answer it. How could she? She stared at the LCD screen, unable to move her fingers even a centimeter. How could I answer it? She couldn't let Kudasu see her like this. But even so, it felt so wrong just to stay here. She decided to go after Maori. But by the time she made it to the over overpass, Maori was already gone. Since she was right in front of the station, there were many people around, and it would have been impossible to find her. Why? <sighs> Why did you come up to me? If you hadn't talked to me, you wouldn't have had to suffer. I'm not who I used to be. She looked down over the station from overpass and whispered to herself. And then she saw someone, saw someone in a distinctive outfit approaching her. They were wearing a black, black motorcycle suit and a full face helmet despite the heat. She thought that it might have been a cosplayer, but instead of trying to take pictures, the people nearby were avoiding them. Given a closer look, the person appeared to be a woman. Even Maho could tell that she had incredible proportions. The woman walked under the overpass and vanished from Maho's view. And then she came up the stairs. And she came right toward Maho. Maho quickly looked away like the other pedestrians and tried to run away. But before she could, the woman in the motorcycle suit ran over and grabbed and wordlessly grabbed her hand. My throat, man. <clears throat> there was a pain in her cheek. She was caught off guard and staggered to the ground. At first, she didn't know what had happened. She rubbed her aching cheek and only then did she realize the woman in the motorcycle suit had slapped her. You hurt mommy, didn't you? She could hear a muffled female voice from within the helmet. I'll kill you. Her voice was very calm, which only terrified Maho more. The professor told me about you, but it doesn't matter. Who are you? Because she was wearing a helmet, Maho couldn't read her facial expression. Since the visor was lowered, she couldn't even see her eyes. There was no answer to her question. Instead, the woman looked at the sky as if she noticed something. Maho looked up too. For a moment, it seemed as if a black shadow crossed the windows of the building. She could hear a helicopter. It was close. How long had it been there? 
She hadn't noticed it at all. And then she felt the air around her change. The pedestrians were all looking towards the station in fear and shock. She could hear the people saying things like, What's that? Are they filming a TV show? Some kind of cosplay event? Something was going on at the station. Mo stood up and looked too. <clears throat> what is that? She found herself whispering the same thing as the others. There were two trucks painted a deep military green and parked outside the station. Men were coming out of them dressed in camo and carrying weapons. At first, she thought it might have been the self-defense force, but the men weren't Japanese. It was hard to believe what she was seeing uh, was taking place in Japan. The men in camo disappeared into the alleyways as everyone watched from a safe di distance. They were heading towards the radio building. Mo had heard from Rintaro yesterday that the time machine was there. Masaka. What's that strat for? Or Russia, or perhaps a, another country's military? Were they here because Maho had told Dr. Leskinen what she'd learned from Rintaro? As soon as the thought crossed her mind, she was hit with another terrible headache. <laughs> it was all her fault. Everything was her fault. Until a moment ago, everything she had seemed so hazy. But now she felt by crushed by overwhelming guilt. If Okabe was right and the Third World War was going to begin here in Akibara, it would be because she gave the information she shared with her to Strat 4 and she suddenly realized that the girl who'd threatened to kill her had run down the stairs and towards the station. Maho never did figure out who she was. And then her phone started to vibrate again. It was from Kudasu. She wanted to get away from the guilt, and so this time she picked up the phone. Senpai! Kudasu. Kudasu. Are you okay? So she's not gone on this world line? Or on this, I, I call it a world line, on this ending? Because like before, what happened to you? Nothing. But you're crying. Only then did she realize that her eyes were overflowing with tears. The fog over her mind was now totally gone, and all that was left was the guilt, the regret, and the headaches. My head hurts. You could say this future is in your hands. Hmm. She heard the noise again. Where's Okabe? What happened to him? Who cares about Okabe? You tried to kill him, I saw it. So in the other world line, Kudasu's gone. Or in the other playthrough, like the Mayori ending, like, Dr. Lessonin takes Kudasu away and like deletes all their files or something. Leave me alone. I can't do that. Just leave me alone. I couldn't beat you. No matter what I tried, I couldn't be better than you. You know, Kudasu. I respect you. You're younger than me, but I think you're an incredible scientist. But from the bottom of my heart, this, this is what I used to think. Why did you have to show up? Why didn't you come 10 years before? Why didn't you come 10 years later? If it weren't for you, I would have had a more peaceful life. Then these awful feelings would, wouldn't take control of me. Everything I thought I knew, you destroyed. And even though you're dead, you're still with me. I want to just be sorry that you're gone, but I can't. You're still this wall that I can't overcome. 
and my pride and stubbornness get in the way. And the man I trusted the most took advantage of that to betray me. And I betrayed a friend who trusted me. I can't even think straight anymore. So leave me alone. She was getting too emotional. Normally she'd never behave like this, but she couldn't stop herself. Is that it? That's it. I had to click. She heard an explosion in the distance. People around her started to scream, panic, and run. The flames from the explosions were coming from the direction uh, the men in camo had gone. It's a new CGI. Did they do it? The helicopter sounds were getting louder. Glimpses of their dark, agile bodies had flashed in and out of Maho's vision for a while now. And then she started to hear loud gunfire. It was more than one or two people shooting. There was a battle going on between many people, taking place here in front of the Akibara station. It was like the beginning of a war. If what Rintaro said was true, Suzuha Amane might be near the time machine, and she might be caught up in the battle. She wondered about the woman in the motorcycle suit, too. She started to sag her forward, but she still didn't know what she was planning, but she needed to take responsibility for what she'd done. The elevators in the radio building were broken. Maho had no choice but to take the stairs to the roof. Maybe the power had been cut because the lights on every floor were off on every floor. She could hear sporadic sounds of gunfire from the floors above. Strangely, nobody came running past her to escape. There were several shops in the building and of course there should have been customers there. But despite the fact that the elevators weren't working, they had all evacuated earlier or had they all evacuated earlier, or were they all hiding and waiting for the terror to end? That was what she thought as she sweated her way up the stairs. Just before she reached the roof, she saw someone for the first time. Mommies. She was sitting on the stairs, cradling her knees, and for some reason her voice was muffled, but it did seem to be a woman's voice. Her head seemed to be big and round in the darkness, and it was the moment before she realized it was a full-face helmet. And then she realized it was the mo woman in the motorcycle suit before. Where are you, Mommy? She seemed like a totally different person than the woman she'd met before. All she did was sob and cry for her mother. Hey, what's going on? Mommy, where are you? Mommy, tell me. She shouted louder and only then did the woman realize she was there. But she didn't even stand up. Mommy's gone. The time machine was destroyed. The time machine was destroyed. Where's your mommy? Or who's your mommy? Is it Suzuha Amane? No. It's Mommy Mayori, of course. Maho's blood ran cold when she heard the name Mayori. Mayori's here? If that was true, she would have come here after she learned the truth from Maho. It's my fault. Maho put her hands to her head. If I hadn't said that, Mayori wouldn't leave. My dual shock batteries low. <sighs> The 
the woman in the motorcycle stood up and approached her menacingly. Oh, that's right. He got the information out of Rintaro Okabe, and that's what began all of this. Give me back my mommy. The girl grabbed her by the collar and lifted her up off the ground. There wasn't anything she could say. When she didn't answer, the woman let go and fell to the ground, crying. Things would be so much easier if she just killed me here. Her mind was in such chaos that she couldn't stop herself from thinking it. She couldn't stay calm at all. And the last thing she clung to was... The AI from, made from Kurusu Makase's memory data. Maybe she was still thinking about their last discussion, because she seemed upset. She wasn't saying anything. So Mayaho gave up the last of her pride. Chris. Kurusu, what do I do? Too much has happened. And there's nothing I can do on my own anymore. I want... At least... At least I want to take up responsibility for what I've done. And then she realized she was still being proud and correct herself. I... She asked herself, What do I want to do? I want to save Okabe. I want to save Mayori. I want to apologize to both of them so they'll forgive me. And Kurusu, I want to save you too. So help me, please. You're asking me for help. Kurusu's eyes were wide. That's right. Her pride had kept her from ever asking Kurusu for help before. And it was the same with Kurusu too. Knowing Kurusu's personality, if Maho asked for help, she'd used every bit of brain power that she had to give it. Come on, tell me. You can give me some solution, right? That's why they said Makase Kurusu was a genius. She was a woman who made the impossible possible. She waited for Kurusu's answer. The last hope, the last thing left in Pandora's box. She waited for Kurusu to give her the answer, but... It's impossible. <laughs> Maha was struck dumb for a moment, and then she realized how selfish she was being and hated her for it. She'd expected too much of Kurusu and tried to put all the burden on her. And just a few moments ago, she... she'd been the one who rejected Kurusu. So... Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Of course that's what you'd say. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Kurusu. I was so horrible to you. And then I stupidly thought that you'd help me unconditionally. I'll help you unconditionally. What? What did you say? I can't turn down a request for help from you. And I want to save Okabe and Mayori Shina too. But then... I'd love to help, but... Unfortunately, my help would just make things worse. I'm constantly being monitored by Strat 4. Constantly? Whenever I'm talking to someone like this, all the information is transferred to Strat 4. There's a hidden function in the Amadeus app that does that. Even Maho hadn't known that existed. So if you try to help Doc or Okabe, Dr. Leskton will know about it. But then what do I do? But if you're willing to take advantage of that, there's something we can do. Maho, will you trust me? Maho? Yeah. You're all I've got. 
Thank you. By the way, I'm sure this conversation will be monitored or is being monitored as well. But then, if they know you're helping me, there are three possibilities. They could take my data off the server and isolate me. Or overwrite my data with an older version of my memories. In the worst case, they could delete me entirely. Don't worry. You're capable of standing up on your own two feet. I'm not worried about me, I'm worried about you. Nothing but data, but thank you. The Kurisu on the screen bowed and smiled. I'm proud that I was able to work with you, Maho. Well, don't talk it's like it's the last time we're ever going to see each other. Well, it might be. I hate you. You always do this. You always go and leave me behind. But that's who Kudusu Makase was. When Maho asked her for help, both she and Kudusu would have been prepared. Or should have been prepared. That's why. Someday, I'll catch up to you. No, I'll surpass you. You just wait. Yeah. Smile once more, then disappear from the screen. Wait, Maho wiped away her tears and then thwopped the crying girl next to her on the helmet? How long are you going to keep crying? You want to save Maori, right? So help me. Help you. First we need to find Okabe. He should be able to show us how to get out of this. But do you know where Stratfor's hideout is? I don't. Neither do I. But Maho grabbed the girl by the hand and helped her up, then raced down the stairs. I don't know. But my friend is going to find me the answer soon. She told me to believe in her. Kurisu Makase wouldn't betray me. I like the, I like the smoke that's going on here. As soon as she left the radio building, she got a message on her Rhine. The gunfire was continuing, and as she hurried away, she looked down at her phone. Okabe is in the basement of Tokyo Denki. I just learned this now. I followed their monitoring to find their location. Take care of Okabe for me. Teach that damn pervert what of a prof Teach that damn pervert of a professor what happens to peeping toms when they watch, who watch all the time. I understand. When she read it, she smiled, despite everything that was going on. Thank you, Kudusu. Thank you. She clutched the phone tightly to her chest, and then she quickly changed gears. I found the Shot 4 hideout. Tell me where it is. I'll go there and kill everyone inside. Maho shivered at the ice in her words. She felt a bottomless madness coming from the woman in the motorcycle suit. But for now, she had to cooperate with her. There was no way she could get Rintaro back from Maho on her er, Rintaro back from Maho on her own. Let's go. She needed to take responsibility for the future she'd created, to avoid that cruel future. Maho ran through the streets of Akibara, where a war was already beginning. Yo shit, this is just a whole new episode. A voice. I could hear a voice. Someone was calling my name. I slowly woke up and turned towards that voice. Maho was standing in the darkness. 
She had a smile on her face that was somehow lonely and somehow sad. I'm sorry. You're not going to see me again. If I'm around you, I might betray you again. Listen. I know this is selfish, but I want you to do something for me. Please. Find Stein's Gate. While you've been captured, something terrible has happened to the world. Mayuri and Suzuha are both missing. Kagari and I went to the Strat 4 hideout to save you. Kagari died there, but she took several of them with her. Dr. Laskin was the only one to escape. Amadeus was deleted too. This is just too much, isn't it? But now you're our only hope. Please know. I know it's horrible to just leave all of this to you, but... Please, reach Stein's Gate no matter what. Okay, Okabe? Farewell. Woke up on top of blankets on laid out on the floor of a hospital. <laughs> the rooms and even the halls outside were overflowing with wounded people. There weren't enough beds, so the blankets were placed on the floor. Where was I? I thought I was back to the other world line with the war. But I wasn't. According to the news on TV, there had been a terror attack in Akibara. A special forces group from another country had gone on a rampage, and it was like something out of a war. The incident had come to an end with the mystery special forces unit disappeared, but many were dead or wounded after the battle. I didn't really remember how I got here. The last thing I remembered was being locked up and horribly tortured by Dr. Leskinen. Oh, we just dropped the Leskinen after we learned that he's evil. Or the doctor. Um, my whole body ached, in fact. Farewell. Hmm. <clears throat> and then I remembered what Maho had said to me in that dream. Was that real? Maho had saved me. And she had mentioned Kagari? I patted down my pockets and my phone was still there. I tried to call Maori. If that dream was real, Maori was missing. But that was impossible. I'd chosen this world line so that Maori would survive. If nothing else, it was guaranteed that she'd make it to 2036. She couldn't die today in 2011. Maori answered me. But no matter how many times I called, she didn't pick up. I forced myself to stand up and leave the hospital room. I went out to the roof. It seemed I was at the Ochanomizu hospital where Fubuki had stayed before. The morning sky was amazingly clear. I could see Akibara in the far distance. There were pillars of smoke rising up. I shivered at the strange sight. Even from here, I could tell by how fierce the battle must have been. The world's history was proceeding as John Titor had prophesied. I tried calling Maori again from the roof, but nobody picked up. My next move was to call Daru out of desperation. <laughs> Good, you're alive. You too. I'm glad you're safe. Things were surprisingly quiet by the lab. Where are you now? 
On the run. I left Akibara. I see. I've gotten in touch with both Ferris Tan and Luca. Both of them say they've evacuated. Hey, Okarin. I can't find Mayushi or Suzuha. And the time machine was completely destroyed yesterday. There's nothing left. Not even a piece of scrap. Things are moving so much faster than Suzuha told us they would. So it wasn't a dream after all. While I was unconscious, she said her goodbye. Hey, Tara. Am I... Am I... Not allowed to live a normal life? I was ready for this to happen. I'm the one who chose a world where the Third World War occurred instead of Steins Gate. But I never thought I'd survive and everyone else would die. This isn't fair. Were the laws of God never going to forgive me, no matter what? Was it that much of a sin to escape the wheel of fate? If it was, then why not just curse me? I'm going to make a time machine. I don't have a choice. I can't let it end this way. What are you going to do, Okarin? The smoke was still rising over Akibara. I stared at it in shock. I... Become a terrorist, dude. The tears welled up. I fell to the ground. I didn't have the strength to stand up. I couldn't answer Dara's question. No matter how hard you try, no matter how much you work to change things, everything converges back to the way God wants it. You're wasting your time struggling against it, Dara. I'm so tired. I need to sleep a little. There's still a few years before the Third World War really begins. And there's 14 years before I die. I'll live my life averting my eyes from reality and not wasting my time with a fight that can't be won. That's only... That's the only end that's fitting for a person like me. I'm sorry, Maho. I'm sorry, Mayori. Aw, oh, I'm sorry, Kudasu. Forgive me for giving up here. All right. Hmm. That was definitely the bad ending, though. Like, I would have gotten that and been like, wow, that's the bad ending. Damn. <clears throat> Not only did Dr. Laskinen live, Maho saved me, Kagari died, Suzuha died, Maori died. The time machine got destroyed. Everything went exactly according to the war that happened. That is absolutely crazy. So now I'm curious of like what Maho's ending is because I really Maho's like the the flag char the flagship character of this game. Like when you look at like all the title art for this game, it's like it's like Okabe and then Kudasu and Maho on the title. So, like, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder what the fuck happens when you go down, like, Maho's line, because Maho is really cute. Um, I think there's a, there's a Kudasu line. Gosh, I wonder what happens on everything. I'm definitely glad I didn't answer the phone. I'm glad my dumbass wasn't like, all right, well, I still want to talk to Kudasu during Daru's meeting. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not going to be rude. I'm going to finish my conversation. And that's what got me the Mayori ending. And like all the other endings, there was only two endings that I could get from not turning off my phone. Like when I was like, there was a while back, back when like in chapter two, where they were like, hey, turn off your phone. And I was like, why the, f 
or maybe it's a good idea to turn off your phone. I'm like, why the fuck would I do that? My phone is like the, the thing that keeps me grounded here. But like, all the other endings come from turning off your phone, which is crazy to me. Um, so I'm kind of glad that we, we got both Maori and uh, the bad ending here. Um, I think we move on to whatever's next. I'll probably do some thinking about what it, which ending I want to do after this one. But damn. Good game. I kind of want Dr. Lesson to die. Is that bad? I kind of I kind of just don't like him now. Blip. Wonder if there's a different number for each ending. Can Henna's stigma completed? This is the Dr. Leskinen ending. <laughs> it's not the bad ending, it's the Dr. Leskinen wins ending. Gameplay recording resumed. Well, too bad, because I recorded the whole thing. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed today's episode of Steins Gate, please leave a like. I really appreciate it, especially on this series. And subscribe if you haven't done that already. Um, we play a lot of visual novel stuff and a lot of roguelike stuff. Um, so if you're into that, um, I'd love to have you. I'd love to freaking hang out. Anyway, I hope to see you guys in the next episode for the next ending. And uh, peace out, you guys. <laughs>